Lesson 13.4b, Designing and Conducting a Simulation for a Compound Event. Now we're going to need to generate some random numbers in this lesson, and I kind of mentioned it in the last lesson in 13.4a, but I taught this in video 10.3a that we learned how to generate random numbers with a TI-83 plus graphing calculator, that's Texas Instrument. First thing we do is turn the power on and press math. Then, on the options along the top, we're going to scroll to the far right to PRB. Then, we can scroll down or press 5 to go to RAND INT, open parentheses for random integer. We're going to put in the first integer, then we're going to hit comma, which is right here. Then we're going to put in the last integer, and then we're going to hit close parentheses. Then we press enter, which is over here, to generate each random integer. So we'll have to push enter over and over again. And we can also access lists of random numbers on the internet. You can go to any one of these sites and generate random numbers. All you have to do is search random number lists and you'll see several choices. We can use random numbers to simulate compound events as well as simple events. The simulation must reflect the circumstances of the problem. Suppose that there's a 25% chance that Chicago, Illinois will experience a blizzard in any given decade find an experimental probability that they will have a blizzard in at least one of the next five decades. The first thing we do is choose a model, and I chose a table that here is trial, so I listed my trial numbers, the numbers I generated, and the blizzard decades. The probability that there will be a blizzard is one-fourth. It told us 25%. We're going to use whole numbers from one to four we're going to let 1 represent a decade with a blizzard. We're going to let 2, 3, and 4 represent a decade without a blizzard. We generate 5 random numbers from 1 to 4. We're doing 5 random numbers in each trial for the 5 decades. We record the number of decades with a blizzard. In my first trial on my calculator, I have got a 34141. That means for the blizzard decades, I got a 2. I got a 34141. So that's a blizzard, and that's a blizzard. That's two blizzard decades out of the five. For my second trial, I didn't get any ones, so I put a zero here. For the third trial, I got two again. For the fourth trial, I got one. For the fifth trial, I got two. And for the sixth, I got two. Then I got zero, I got zero, I got a one and a one. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the ten trials that had blizzard decades. So we just perform multiple trials by repeating this step two. We calculate the percent of trials in which there was a blizzard in at least one of the five decades. So two counts, that's in at least one of them, and in seven of ten trials, there was a blizzard in at least one of the five decades. The experimental probability of a blizzard in at least one of the next five decades is seven-tenths, seven out of ten, which is equal to 70 hundredths, which is 0 0.70 as a decimal, or 70 percent. The parameters, that's our boundaries for our random numbers, were from one to four, as 1, 2, 3, 4, because it stated that Chicago had a 25% chance, or one-fourth chance, of experiencing a blizzard in any given decade. We generated five random numbers for each trial because we needed to find the probability that the city will have a blizzard in at least one of the next five decades. If it was three decades, we would have generated three random numbers for each trial. Since we found the probability of Chicago experiencing a blizzard as 70% in at least one of the next five decades, it's more likely than not to occur. So on our number line, with zero is it's impossible, there's no way it's going to happen, and certain is 100%, it's definitely going to happen, the 70% lands about right here, and so it's likely, it's more likely than not 
to occur. So here's a helpful hint. When a word problem gives a percentage, such as 15%, rewrite it as a fraction. We take away that percentage sign and move the decimal point over to here. That way, we have it as a decimal as 15 hundredths, and we can simplify 15 hundredths as 3 twentieths. Then we'll know our random numbers will be from 1 to 20, see? And 1 to 3 can represent the event, and the remaining numbers to 20 can represent not the event. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was our last lesson for 7th grade math. And I'm very, very proud of you for making it through this playlist if you watched all those videos. And I hope to see you soon for 8th grade math. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope you join me for 8th grade math. Bye!